If you rely on the state pension, either now or in the future, you're going to be financially worse off as a result of a vote in the House of Commons this week. In this video, we're going to talk about what this means for you as a retiree or future retiree. Hello, I'm Martin Bamford, a chartered financial planner, personal finance YouTuber and money author. On this channel, I talk about personal finance, investing and happiness. I make these videos to help you become wealthier and happier. If that sounds like a great result, I hope it does. Click on that little red subscribe subscribe button to become part of our subscriber community. It's completely free and you'll never miss an episode. MPs in the House of Commons have voted to back the government in scrapping the state pension triple lock. They refused to support a move by peers in the House of Lords to keep the triple lock in place, at least a modified version of it. The House of Lords amendments of a social security upbracing of benefits bill would have retained the triple lock for state pensioners, and it would have done that by allowing the government to change the earnings linked increase to account for the impact of earnings changes during the pandemic. But no, there is to be no earnings related increase to state pensions at all next year, with the government breaking an explicit pledge they made in the Conservative manifesto during the last general election. It's a move that's going to save Chancellor Rishi Sunak an estimated 5.4 billion pounds next year and it's going to mean those in receipt of a state pension are around 400 pounds a year worse off. Back to basics quickly before we look at this vote in the House of Commons. The triple lock is designed to operate the state pension each year by the highest of average earnings, price inflation or two and a half percent. However because of the impact of the pandemic on average earnings which were artificially high at 8.3 percent the government recently decided to remove this element of the triple lock. So I guess we call it a double lock, don't we? State pensions will not rise by 8.3% next April, but instead by the Consumer Prices Index CPI inflation figure for September. That was 3.1%. The House of Lords amendment was an attempt to soften the blow for state pensioners. It was put forward by my friend Baroness Ros Altman, who said the amendment gave MPs an opportunity to demonstrate that government plans to scrap the triple lock amidst rising household costs were wrong. However, MPs voted by 300 votes to 229 in favour of the government on this one, so the amendment was rejected. The amendment was backed by the Labour Party. Shadow Working Pension Secretary Jonathan Reynolds called it reasonable saying for public trust to return the first step has to be for government to keep its promises so today Labour is supporting the amendment which would allow the government to do just that and keep their promise on the pensions triple lock. The Lords have sent us a very reasonable set of measures and frankly I see no logical reason not to support this amendment if you want to protect the link between earnings and pensions. Does all of this mean that a triple lock is gone for good? Well that's certainly the fear right now. After all if the government can break its promise to pensioners once, what stops it from doing it again? But Pensions Minister Guy Opperman said the government remained committed to the triple lock for the rest of Parliament and the adjustment was for one year only. He said that tying the pensions up rate into earnings is not possible because it wasn't possible to reach a better estimate of earnings and he urged MPs to vote against keeping the triple lock. He said ONS experts investigated whether it was possible to produce a single robust figure for underlying earnings growth that strips out impacts from the pandemic. They concluded this was not possible. I remind the House that over the two years of the pandemic, the government will have ensured that the pensions covered by this bill will have increased by much more than the increase in prices. What does this actually mean if you're in receipt of a state pension? Well, from April 2022, the basic state pension will rise to £141.85 a week. That's up £4.25 a week. The new state pension, available to those who reach state pension age more recently, that goes up £5.55 to reach £185.15 a week. Had the government maintained the triple lock, linking those increases to average earnings instead of price inflation, the basic state pension would have risen by £11.40 a week and the new state pension by £14.90 a week. That's why next year in 2022, pensioners are around £400 a year worse off. We need to keep in mind that an increase in state pension income next year is good news for pensioners, but it is still likely to represent a real terms cut to their pay. And that's because price inflation is forecast 
just average 4% in 2022. So it could well outpace this income increase of 3.1%, leaving pensioners worse off. Also keep in mind that pensioners tend to experience higher price inflation than the official averages. And that's because they experience something called silver inflation. The goods and services we tend to buy when we're older, they typically rise in price faster than those we buy when we're younger. So we could call that a pensioner penalty. What's your reaction to this news that MPs have finally knocked the triple lock on the head? They've done away with it. Do you really think it will only be a double lock for this year, for one year? Or do you think they'll scrap it again the following year too? Thank you for watching this video. Until next time, I'm Martin Bamford. And remember, when it comes to your money, the more you know, the faster it can grow.